Six tips for brain-based learning. How brain-based learning could make a huge difference in the way students could learn. Create a safe climate for learning when students are feeling anxious or fearful. They aren't in the mood to learn. Morning meetings, developmental spline, and the student leadership teams are among the strategies that can foster healthy social and emotional learning. Encourage a growth mindset. Ask students to describe their brain with a metaphor and they are likely to suggest a computer command center or maybe a lighting fast communications network. But they would be better of thinking of the brain as a muscle that gets stronger with us. Researchers now understand that IQ isn't fixed at birth. Just as we get more physically fit from exercising, we can build brain power through the act of learning. There are five key concepts on this topic. These concepts give us an accessible framework for talking about and learning about brain-based learning, human brains, are unique as unique as faces all brains are not equal because context and ability influence learning the brain is changed by experience the brain is highly plastic the brain connects new information to all the three emphasized feedback educational researchers have long stressed the value of feedback for keeping learning on track. Safety classroom teachers use a range of formative assessment strategies to check on, on understanding and address misconceptions, misconceptions early. Not surprisingly, feedback is a cornerstone of brain-based learning. In mind, brain and the education science Tacoma Specia points out great teachers know that moments of evaluation can and should always become moments of teaching. Get bodies and brains in gear. Research based rule for brain owners to keep in mind. Exercise boosts this brain power. Cardio activity increases oxygen rich blood follow to the brain and increases students' ability to concentrate. BE teachers collaborate with academic colleagues to find more opportunities for brain breaks that get students moving during class. Start early formal schooling may not start until age 5, but we all know children are learning long before they begin kindergarten. By reaching surprise the power of novelty or follow the power of creativity, surprise and novelty are the attention grabbers. In the classroom, this means that changing routines, asking the students to consider similarities and differences, field trips and guest visitors all help to keep learning fresh. The science of successful learning make it desirably difficult choose mixed brackets over blocked brackets commonly used in education industry the military and sports because it produces fast learning and the students and teachers like it after all who wouldn't want to learn fast mixed brackets is better on measures of long-term learning because certain difficulties encountered in learning, ones that can be overcome through effort, often produce better performance in the long term. Efficiency have to solve four different types of math problems, with the types given in a random sequence. The task feels hard and clunky to them because they are confused early on. With mixed breaks of examples, students have to figure out what kind of problem they are facing. Then remember or look up 
the formula for it and then solve the problem. Block the brackets is much easier because it avoids the first two steps discovering the type of a problem and determining the formula needed. In block the practice, students just repeatedly run through the same routine. Choose active retrieval over reading. Suppose students read a passage, they will be tested on a week later. Just after reading it, one group of students is given a test. They are told to recall as much of the passage as they can. The other group is given a more passive strategy to simply reread the entire passage. That outcome is complete reversal from what happened when those students were tested immediately. The second outcome, the one found after a delay, is called the retrieval practice effect or the testing effect if students review material by activity, actively retrieving it, they will remember it much better over the long term than if they just passively read the material. All the habits by heart. Research shows that methods like block the breaks or reading work fine. A performance is only measured shortly after learning teachers can look at quiz performance soon after teaching with block breaks, examples, see good grades and think my students are really learning. The question. Others. Yes, <laughs> for the short term, but they may wonder why their knowledge has melted away by final exam time or worse yet when they need to know the material outside of class. More than a four-letter word. This is clearly a four-letter word to most educators. The problem is that the benefits of testing are not immediately avoided because the tribal practice facilitates long-term use of knowledge. Further, the tribal practice doesn't enhance knowledge just of basic facts, but also of procedures, visual representations, and narratives. Some evidence also shows that retrieval practice may enhance transfer of knowledge to new situations. Plus, the difficulty when I describe research on the benefits of introducing difficulties, such as a frequent testing into the learning process. Teachers often tell me my students will reveal or my students' rating will suffer. But my experience and that of the team says otherwise. Many students say that when they are taught this way, they are always focused with their work and preparing for vacancies for the final easier. What can we do to ensure learning that lasts? Four good ways to learn, elaborative interrogation and self-explanation. Students use these two techniques as they are reading. With elaborative interrog interrogation, you periodically consider the relationship between what you are reading and what you already know. With self-explanation, you periodically explain to yourself why assertions in that in the text are justified? Disrupted practice cramming practice into the hours right before a test is an effective strategy, provided you don't care that you will softly forget what you have learned for longer. Retention spacing breaks out is much more effective. Implementing this strategy is, in one sense, easy. You just separate the study sessions. But by how much? That depends on how long you want to remember the material. Roughly speaking, study sessions should be separated by 10 to 20% of the time that you'd like to remember something. 
hands if you hold two three and deliver and the interlevated interlevated interleaved breaths it applies not just to a single list but to broader principle typically a new concept is introduced some sample problems are solved step by step and the set of breaths problems appear at the end of the chapter all of, all of which draw on the same concept algorithm it calls for a bit of planning what's needed is a study and the practice of different concepts within a single vision session if circular materials aren't set up for this sort of testing this technique has something in common with interleaved practice in this strategy, the student may struggle and even fail to remember. It feels fruitless, wouldn't the time be better spent reading over the material again? But study after study shows that taking a private quiz is better for memory than reading. The largest benefit to memory cures the when the student gets immediate corrective feedback. But even if there is no feedback, and even if the student fails to remember the answer, it is still better for memory than reading. The value of applied research in driver practice improves classroom learning and recommendation from a teacher or a principal and a scientist.